Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1178. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got some survey data here, and we need to make a particular calculation. We need to calculate the percentage or probability that a no response was recorded given that the response was from a full-time faculty in the business department. So really, if you're doing probability, this would be a conditional and an and probability. No, given that the response came from a full-time faculty and they were in the business division. Here's our data set. Now we're going to see three ways. We're going to do a pivot table, then we're going to do it with formulas, and when we do it with formulas, we'll do it with count ifs, then we'll do it with d counta, which is a database function, and we'll learn something interesting about database functions that I didn't know. Now, the easy way to do this is a pivot table. And actually, we're going to do pivot table and slicers. We have field names at the top, empty cells all the way around, records in rows. That matches the definition of a proper data set in Excel. So we can use a pivot table. I go up to Insert, Pivot Table, and I click. Or I can use the keyboard. As long as one cell is selected, Alt-NV. This opens up the Pivot Table dialog box. I want to put it on this sheet. So I'm going to say Location and something like E6. Click OK. Now really, before we start clicking and dragging, the fundamentals of this when we have a probability like no, given that it's business and full time, we need to go through and count all the business and full times no matter what response they gave. That'll be our denominator for our percentage. That'll be the total. And then the part we will take is no and business and full time. And we'll actually see that explicitly with formulas. But with pivot tables, watch this. The first thing is we can get a unique list from this response category by taking the field response and dragging it down to rows. And instantly, I get a unique list. I then drag response down to values. Boom, because it was a text field, this response, it defaults to count. Now I'm going to drag it down a second time. And I can come over to the second count of response, right click, show values as, and percentage of column total. Now I'm going to clean this up a bit. I'm going to put percent response. And so now, this is only one condition we're comparing the actual responses for. So for the whole data set, 30 people said no of the 211, 14.22%. Now we need to limit the sample space, in essence, the total down to just business and full time. I'm going to do that with a slicer. So pivot table is selected. Actually, before we add our slicer, let's get rid of this row labels. I'm going to go up to Design report layout and show in tabular or outline. That'll show me the actual field name up here. Now, for the slicer, we go up to Analyze. In the Filter group, because these will filter both the number and these percentages, we click on the Insert Slicer. That brings up a list of all the fields. This is a field list. I'm going to click Division and Employment Status and click OK. Now we can move these off to the side. Resize them, point down to the bottom. I'll resize this one too. Down at the bottom, click and drag up. Drag this one over here. And while we're at it, we might as well go to Slicer Options and change the colors to whatever you want. And actually, we can go down to some deeper colors down here if we want. Click the More button, do like blue and yellow. Oh, that is terrible. Blue and orange, ah, that's terrible too. I'll do related colors, so they both have some blue in it. All right, now I can use the slicer to further filter this data set. Now when I click on the slicer on full time, I have changed the sample space. Now it's only 100. These are all the responses from our survey, but for full time only. And now I want to go down to Division and select business. Now I have a sample space of 44. That's the denominator. 9 for no. There's the percentage. 
So using a pivot table and slicers is unbelievably fast and easy. And what's so beautiful about this is, of course, now we can click through any one of these sets of criteria out here we want to select. Now let's see how to do this with formulas. The advantage to formulas is if anything changes down here, this updates. They will completely update. The pivot table, usually when we get a data dump like this, you know, this is a one-time survey. It's not going to change, so the pivot table is fast as e easy. Now before we do the formula here, I'm going to set some criteria up. So I'm going to highlight these columns, Control-C. And over here, I'm going to right click and point to Pay Special Values. I'm going to change the width of this column right here. Highlight and add some formatting. Now the response is going to be no. The division is going to be business. And the employment status is full time. Now we're going to use these two conditions for the denominator. I want to look just through these first two columns and count all of the business in full time. That'll give us our 44. And I'm going to use count ifs. Count ifs actually is a much better option than the D functions that we'll use. It has more versatility in many ways. The formula can be copied and all sorts of things. But the criteria range, we're going to select the top cell in division and Control Shift down arrow to highlight all the way to the bottom. Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell, comma. The criteria, this is for division. All I want is business comma. And notice how the screen tip is quite polite. Criteria range 2. The fact that it says range, that means I want all of the cells in this column. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. Comma to get to the next argument. Criteria 2. I want full time. Close parentheses. If I enter this, that has a percentage format. I'm home ribbon over in the number group. Drop down and general is the eraser that removes all number formatting. And I click and there we go. Escape because the ribbons were kind of showing there. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to add one more criteria range. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this and then come to the beginning, control V to paste, and division forward slash. Now I need to come and click inside. Criteria 2, this is for the numerator. This will be the denominator. I'm going to type a comma to get to criteria range 3. And now I'm going to get the nose. Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace, comma, and criteria 3. Now it's kind of hard to get there. I can click right here. If I can't quite get to it, I could click and then arrow up. That's where the no is. And Control Enter. And there's our same percentage. Now I can go to Home and add some percentage. This does not round the number. It doesn't hack off the integers when I select it. It simply displays it with only two decimals showing. If I were to increase the decimals, all those decimals are still there. If you really want the two most efficient methods, here they are. You can stop watching this video. But Let's see how to do it with the D functions. And if it weren't for a particular anomaly that we're going to see and have to solve here, the D functions would be OK to do this. But let's go ahead and I'm going to copy this, Control-C and Control-V right here, and delete that. And here's the way the D functions. Let's just see if we can count all of the business full time and get that same number. Equals D, and there's a bunch of D functions. There's actually D sum down here, D standard deviation for the sample, D standard deviation for the population. There's D count, that counts number, count a. Uh. There's D average and some other ones, max and min. I'm going to say D count it because we're counting text, and count a uh, counts not empty cells. And look at this. The screen tip says database. Got to have field names at the top, records in rows. I'm going to highlight these top three cells, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, comma. Now the field, if we were counting on a particular field, 1, 2, 3, we could put 1, 2, 3, or put the actual name of the field in double quotes. But you know what? We're counting all the records. So I'm going to leave it blank, comma, and the criteria. The unusual thing about decounta is that you have to have field names at the top and your criteria below. In a second, I will delete these 
field names at the top and see that the COUNTIF function has no problem that but decounta will. In fact, what is happening here is the criteria is communicating with this data set through decounta because of the field name. So when I highlight this, it says field name response, field name division, employment status, and the criteria is below. Because database is here and the field names at the top, decounta is programmed to look through these different names given that different criteria. So this is different than the count ifs where we had to highlight specific columns. Now this will give us the total. Let me teach you a keyboard. Control, Shift, Grave Accent, or Tilde. The Grave Accent or Tilde key is to the left of the number 1. That applies general formatting. That is supposed to give us this 9. Now the reason it's not is because, and I didn't know this, I'm going to go ahead and show you another trick here. If you have trouble with a function, you can click on the screen tip hot link right here, and it will take you to help. And actually, I've read help for the D functions for decades. They're awesome functions. And sure enough, down here, it says something that I have seen for years. When entering text in a cell, do it this way. You have to do a formula. And in double quotes, you have to say equals entry. Now, I have used D functions for years and have never done this until today. I found out the reason why. And let's go ahead and close this. The reason why is D counta is seen no, but there's a no and a not sure. If we look through this data set and count all of the business business division full time that have no or not sure. There are exactly 20. So in essence, decounta is doing a contains. That means the text in this column contains n and o. So let's just do that and watch. Equal sign, that's the first equal sign that starts the formula. All text goes in double quotes. And then you have to put an equal sign. And double quotes, and no problem, it works. Now, this is the only one that has, you know, a, a, in essence, duplicate contains problem here. But if we were going to do this to all of these, and I have seen people do this before, even students have handed in tests, and I don't mark them off for it, but I thought it was excessive. All the years I've seen that, I was like, oh, I don't need to do that because I'm not getting the wrong answer. But sure enough, when you have contains, you do get a different answer. Now, notice that the, the count ifs, it has no problem with these either's. Now, if I were to delete this, Alt EAA, you can see we get a zero here, but count ifs, because we had to do the individual columns and the individual criteria and match, in essence, the criteria to the column, it has no problem with no field names. But Control Z, the D functions, depend on the field names up here to communicate with the data set. Now, if we have it this way, we can simply now go, and I'm going to cheat, watch this. I'm going to copy this Control C. And remember, this is all three conditions. That's what got us the count of 9. So I come to the end, forward slash, Control V. That doesn't work because 9 divided by 9 is 1. I need to get that 44. Remember, I just need division, business, and employment status. So I'm going to change the D to an E, and I'm going to type it. And then see, I can see the criteria range has changed. That purple range, that will give me the count of 44. I could even highlight just that little bit and do something dangerous in edit mode. I could hit the F9 key to see, oh yeah, there's the 44 just like there. Control Z, don't leave it hard coded in. Control Enter, there's our calculation. If I wanted to format home, number, drop down and point to percentage, two decimals, escape. All right, we saw the D counta, we saw count ifs, and we saw the pivot table. All right, we'll see you next trick.